and welcome to the Grad Dialogue. You know, today my guest is a good friend, Teresa Thomas. Uh, Teresa and I kind of go a long way. I think my first association was when I was working out at the Heinz Center, and then Teresa used to be the uh, uh, the uh, executive director or the CEO of the Heinz Center. Uh, right now, I think you know she is a uh, executive director of Five After Five. That is correct, Jitian. Yeah, you know, and she is. Uh, you know, you will find out she is a very enthusiastic, ambitious, and professional individual who has been has had a proven track record in a highly competitive environment. You know, she is a is, is a talented event sales director who can enhance performance at any business by her energy, drive, commitment to succeed and to build. And I can say that because we have, have quite a few events you know, to your assistance, professionally as well as uh, community events you know, that I was involved in. Always nice to have those things. Now, as the Friday After Friday new executive director, uh, she will bring the new ideas and new uh, structure to this nonprofit community event. Now, Teresa has uh, also served on the several committees uh, in, in the community, including the Owensboro High PSD, uh, Special Olympics of Kentucky, Animal Control Board, uh, and also the graduate of the uh, 2013 uh, Leadership Owensboro. So, Teresa, welcome on the Grad Dialogue. Well, Jitin, thank you for having me today. Yeah. You know, uh, let's see, the Friday After Five is now uh, how many years? Uh, this is the 21st season. 21st season. Yes, last so year we celebrated our 21st anniversary, or 20th anniversary, uh -huh, uh -huh. and Kirk, uh, Kirk Patrick uh -huh. retired at the uh -huh. end of the season and handed me over with the 21st season. So uh -huh. things are, have been very busy this season. Now, you know, trying to come after Kirk, I'm sure itself, <laughs> you know, people are looking forward to what else she's going to do to yes. overcome, you know, some of the excitement that he used to bring. Yep, obviously so. Kirk made me feel big shoes. Uh -huh, I mean, he, uh -huh. you know, he is one of the people that was in the inception of Friday After Five right. when it was only four events in the courtyard at the River Park Center. Right, um, right. So when you look at that and then you look at how we are today and we have five venues, 16 weeks, street fair is growing tremendously. Um, we've now got a partnership with the convention center. Kirk started this, so now uh -huh, I have uh -huh. to continue to grow it. And that's yeah, in yeah. this season has already hit record numbers for the first four weekends of Friday after five. So within the first year, you are already putting a mark, uh, on the Friday after five event coordinator. Yes. Um, yeah. I have to say that Kirk Kirkpatrick, what he tells me is, uh -huh. is that the reason why I put such a mark on it was I did something to mother nature cause we haven't had any rain yet. Right. So right. mother nature is either very scared of me or she's working with me. Either way, it's been a great season I so far. I think it's the first part. That's true. Yeah. 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 You, you probably talked out of the mother, mother nature, not to rain. That know? is so, correct. Yeah, I yeah. told her, I said, yeah. we, ha we didn't have a winter. We shouldn't yeah, have to yeah, have any yeah. rain. So let's, uh, let's talk about the, I don't know, the Friday after five, you know, the 21st year, uh, it's not a new event now. That is uh, correct. However, however, there are many, many people who do not even take part in that. Uh, it was uh, supposed to be. And, and also another you know, new, you know, this is not just a local event. It's a regional and statewide event. So kind of tell us, uh, you know, the timing of that, uh, you know, what happens uh, and, and, and how it has been evolved to be a premier uh, a tourism activity you know, for the region. Um, Friday After Five, when, of course, obviously when it first started, they wanted it to be a small community event, uh -huh. free to the public. Um, and of course, as we've seen it progress over the years and adding the street fair and costume <laughs> characters and free popcorn and free balloon animals. And as you keep hearing me say, everything is free, Jatin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it does enhance um, the outside tourism to come to Owensboro because it's free. They can come stay at a motel, but not have to pay for bands mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, the entertainment that's gonna be on the riverfront. Um, so working close with the CVB and, and making sure that, you know, we're doing some outside marketing too, to bring the tourism to Owensboro. Right. Um, Friday After Five's niche is it's got to be free. If it's uh -huh, not free, uh -huh. we don't want to be, it's not part of what Friday After Five yeah, is about. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're seeing that grow in the community, not just from our sponsorship levels, but from vendors on the street fair right. um, and our partnership with the convention center and our partnership with the River Park Center um, has just been an instrumental part of why uh -huh, Friday After uh -huh. Five continues to grow. And I, and I think looking at some of the videos and you know, some of the Twitter accounts, mm -hmm. and in fact, you, know, you do have some YouTube and everything else. The people are having a lot of fun. Now the challenge, you know, you're always going to have your loyal crowd. Mm -hmm. Maybe even some people have been coming for the last 21 years, you know, every Friday, well, Friday after five. How you entice the newer crowd, and especially in the in the in the time and the days of 
social media and everything. How yeah. are you going to tell them to get away from Facebook and attend the Friday It's after funny that you say that, Jatin, because this past weekend uh -huh. on our, our for our very first Friday After Five, we did um, a DJ. And we had been going back and forth for several years because I've been on the committee since 2011. Uh -huh. We had gone back and forth for several uh -huh. years about, well, a DJ really doesn't work with the free concert series. Who, you know, who really wants to listen to a DJ? Uh -huh. We brought a young lady, um, her name's Shana Tennell, um, to Friday After Five this past weekend, and it was record numbers at the convention oh. center. So it's just finding ways that, number one, it was the age dynamics, mm -hmm. bringing mm -hmm. that eight, the, the younger age that want to come to an event, but yet maybe not want to hear music that you and I listen to mm -hmm. or that our grandparents mm -hmm. listen to. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we just have to find ways to get around that. And mm -hmm. a DJ mm -hmm. added to that mix was a great thing. Mm -hmm. We just weren't for sure about it, so we only did one DJ this year, mm -hmm. but there are going to be some new things to come in 2018. So you, you mentioned there's a DJ involved, there is also the music and dancing involved. So that means, you know, that it's more than a DJ as far as, so kind of tell us some of the typical activity as uh, somebody who has not been to Friday After Five, we'll find out. You know. Yeah, Friday After Five starts, a lot of people get a little bit confused. It starts at 5 p.m., mm -hmm. however, the bands don't start till 6.30. Um, we have five venues that we run, so there's a, there's, um, a lot of different moving parts in Friday After Five. At 6.30, we have a band on the patio stage, uh -huh. which is at the River Park Center, and that is sponsored by the Jago Homes. Um, mm -hmm. That band is typically gonna be kind of your crowd that wants to get out and just do a little bit of groove dancing. Mm -hmm. They're not the party in crowd. A right. um, little more laid back, bringing their families down. Uh, kids in strollers, they get free popcorn, free balloon animals. There's a free photo booth. Um, they get to take advantage of that. Then we also have inside the River Park Center once a month, Glenn's Gospel on the River. Uh -huh. Um, and that's all sponsored by Glenn. Again, uh -huh. it's free. Uh -huh. uh, it'll seat 1,500 people in the Cannon Hall. Um, and that is for a whole, a whole different group of people. I see. I um, see. You have uh, churchgoers and people that are really into the gospel uh -huh. um, side of music. Uh -huh. That's who's going to be involved uh -huh. in that. Uh -huh. um, and then, then we have the courtyard and the Atmos Energy Courtyard. Um, that is going to be acoustic only. It's going to be see. like a one or two person strumming. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. We do a little bit of bluegrass in there as well. Uh -huh. um, so, obviously, as you're seeing, we try to make sure we're covering every Everybody that wants to come down to Friday after five. So then we go down to the pier. I see. At okay. the Owensboro Convention Center, which is the Don Moore party at the right. Kentucky Legend right. Pier. And down there, that's where you're going to see the changeover of the younger generation, the social media gurus, the people that are promoting it for us, where uh -huh. we're not even really having to do much because uh -huh. they're saying, hey, come down to Friday after five. We've got a, a Jago specialty drink. There's a DJ. There's a music playing. There's dancing. Um, so there's just so many moving parts that it fits in every single um, aspect of our community, I believe. So, so with, with, the, with the main mission of bringing the folks you know, local as well as the visitors to the downtown, you know, on Friday mm -hmm. after five, after five. And then you provide all different uh, uh, collaborations with the sponsors and partners. And you mentioned even, uh, you know, the, the peer side of it. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine uh, as time goes on, you'll con somehow you'll connect the bluegrass and the museum and being on the river as well. Yep. So kind of provide everything, kind of smokers for any, any, anybody who has some, some interest, they can do those things. You know? Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's not, we're, we are, we're not prejudiced. We want right, everyone down right, there, right. Um, you know, uh, and, and we see that from all parts of our community. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, it can be a, a kid coming down on his bicycle to just right. hang out and get away from mom and dad for a little bit. Or it could be mom and dad coming down and leaving the kids at home with a sitter just to be able to have something that's free, doesn't cost them any money. You know, of course, now the food vendors, we have 11 food vendors this year, and that's the most food yeah, vendors yeah. we've ever had. Now, you know, you talk about the kids. Now, you know, mm -hmm. all this time you're talking about some of the some of the activities that is generally mm -hmm. adult oriented, you know, uh, you know, I mean, but as far as the uh, you know, preteens and all those things, do you also have some like rides and things like that we don't or, do any rides uh -huh. um we did we have picked up some bouncy houses see, and I some see. and a mechanical bull this year uh -huh. that uh -huh. some of the teenagers are being able to take advantage of um but it's really hard because te if you know you remember to when you had teenagers right you right. can never make a teen do what you want them to do yeah, so yeah. so we try to offer things that will work and mm -hmm. fit with them however mm -hmm. that park down there the 40 million dollar renovation mm -hmm. to the park mm -hmm. i mean it it's its own selling feature right, to itself right, and the right. kids love to come down there they go in the park, um, you know, the water park, the little spray park. So really, it, it kind of, it just suits itself and us not really having to provide a lot of stuff. Um, but a lot of the kids, 
um, especially on this past Friday night with the DJ, we had teenager kids there. I see, I see. And then middle-aged children, right, and right. then, of course, the middle-aged adults. Sure, sure. But I had a lot of people down there that were my age, Jatin, and they were shaking their little tail feathers. <laughs> so. I'm sure they were. No, you were probably telling them how to shake the tail, That's too. That's right, and we no. were videoing it all, for sure. Now, Teresa, as you, as you guys uh, celebrate, or the community celebrates the 21st year, mm -hmm. uh, over the years, the Friday After Fire Festival itself, has won quite a few awards. Can you want to mention about those? Uh, well, we've won, um, you know, several awards with uh -huh. them. And, and, you know, it's, it's funny because I keep going back and forth, but the community picks us for these awards typically. Right. Um, you know, we've won uh, a Kentucky amusement um, fun park uh, downtown. We won that Friday after five with like the top one of the top ten. I think is how it worked. And then we've won in the community newspaper the Reader's Choice, the Platinum oh. Awards, mm -hmm. um, and that just means the community is just as engaged in what we have to offer mm -hmm. as what we are. And you know, a lot of people don't understand. Uh, Friday after five is all a volunteer. Um, product. The only person that's paid is the executive director and everyone else is a volunteer. So we're always looking for volunteers, young uh -huh. professionals that are uh -huh. looking to get their name into the system because um, they're on the stage talking about the sponsors and talking about the activities. Um, so so we're we're very excited for the awards we get because it's not it's not that we get the awards because uh -huh. of us. Uh -huh. We get the awards because the community is engaged right, right. Yeah. and we have such young professionals that want to get out there and be involved in the community and that's why we win these awards. Teresa, when you, when you mentioned all this excitement and everything else on Friday after five, people listening to the show, you're going to say, okay, this is okay about the music and dancing and all those things. But what about the food and drink? You know, tell us about the venue. What kind of uh, venues do you have for the food and also the right. drinks and everything? Well, I tell you, Jitian, for the last, I had the street fair starting in 2011, mm -hmm. and I ran it until um, last year. Uh, basically, I've been working with Starling Lambert and Casey Taylor, uh, working to get the street fair big. And I'll tell you, this year has been huge. We have 11 food vendors. Um, our, all of the beverages are purchased through the River Park Center and the Convention Center. Um, so, <coughs> you know, it's just a big season this year. Oh, okay, okay. So what about, uh, do, do you still have the beer garden or you don't have beer garden? No, no the beer gardens are taken care of I inside see, see. the Convention Center uh -huh, and uh -huh. inside the River Park Center. Uh -huh. um, and that just meets the, you know, the state ABC uh -huh. laws uh -huh. and what we have to follow. And uh -huh. they, they hold those licenses so we don't have to uh, uh -huh. mess with those at Friday after, oh, okay. as far as five committee members go. Right, yeah. Now, you know, as, as a new executive director, you know, what do you have some up your sleeves that you're going to be, ex you know, maybe something that we'll be looking forward to as time goes on and as Friday after Friday. We're events. looking at more ways to enhance our sponsorships, and that's a huge okay. deal to me uh -huh. because I feel like that those people have engaged in Friday after five and are part of our community. We need to find ways to enhance those. And we've already got one way this year. We've, we've partnered with OZ Tyler and uh -huh. um, they're going to do a special party for all of our sponsors on September 7th. And it's and it's a great community partnership and all of our sponsors are going to be uh, rewarded that night um, by being a part of Friday After Five. Is that the, fr is that the Friday, September 7th? No, it's no. actually okay. a Thursday okay. and it'll be the it'll be the uh, last Friday uh, after five is on September 1st. Uh -huh. And then that following Thursday on September 7th, we'll be awar uh, rewarding all of our now, sponsors. Now somebody told me uh, that the Friday After after five now they have a pre-union yes is they that? do yeah uh, pre-unions um, are a reunion before your reunion so your reunions on Saturday so pre-union is on Friday night it's free all you have to do is go on our, our website the www.fridayafterfive the number five dot com and you can submit a pre-union application we send that over to our producer and then the producer will call the reunion set that up and they get to set a table up either at the River Park Center or at the Convention Center and it's free of charge so it's, it's a family reunion yes so, okay you can okay. do that as okay. well okay. yes we have had several family yeah. reunions that uh -huh. set up uh -huh. and then there are some family reunions that we'll want to set up in the gazebos. Unfortunately, we can't book the gazebos. That goes through the city of Owensboro, but we do help them and guide them in the direction to get those booked. Excellent. Look at all the enthusiasm that I you're know. bringing in. I know. Now, now the dates wise, the, uh, the festival goes on every Friday after 5 till what date? You know? September 1st. September 1st. It okay. always ends on the Friday of Labor uh -huh. Day weekend. Uh -huh. Okay. Teresa, great. You know, thank you. And uh, if you... You know, if somebody wants to know more about the Friday After Five, they can go on the Friday After Five, f number five, mm -hmm. dot com. com. Or mm -hmm. nowadays they can download it on their uh, mobile device and I do see. our Friday After Five app. app they, we have okay. an Android app I and see. an iPhone app. Um, they just put it on their phone and then everything that we do at Friday After Five uh -huh. is right there on that app. And somebody just wants to call you directly to hear all the enthusiasm, how they can call you. They can call me at 270-231-2000. Uh -huh. 
2656, Jatin. Teresa, thank you very much for well, being in the dialogue. I'm so proud of you that you took on that worthy Friday after Fire Festival. Well, thank you very yeah. much, Jatin, right. for having me today. Right. Again, we're talking to Teresa Thomas. She's the new executive director of Friday After Five. And all the excitement the Friday After Five continues to bring in, in our own sport and for the whole region. So if you have any questions, you can always go on the website or, or can directly call Teresa or call the grad office. Thank you very much and have a great day. Hello and welcome to the Grad Dialogue. Today my guest is Mark Kalitri. Now Mark is a newcomer to Owensboro, so we are so honored to have him on the Grad Dialogue. And the reason the Mark he is on this uh, uh, Dialogue show is that he is the newest uh, president of the Owensboro Davis County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Am I correct? Yes, make sure. ODCVB. So we'll make sure this is covers the whole county. And and uh, Mark uh, this this morning also spoke to the Grad Board of Directors because we at the grad see the value of what happens in Owensboro Davis County as a regional impact and also region is itself has a quite a few things to celebrate as a tourism so we feel like they should be connecting with the Owensboro being the largest community here. So again Mark welcome on the Grad Dialogue and uh, since I said you are newcomers uh, let me just give you a brief introduction about yourself. You know he comes from the Cincinnati CVB uh, with Cincinnati East CVB I guess there are more than one CVB down there being larger community and where Mark's leadership uh, was an agency that has risen to be number one in a ranking as a top one person of all destination marketing organization nationwide. That's a great honor. Congratulations on that. And I think it's so honored for us to have you come to, you know, to, to lead the Owensboro in Davis County area. Uh, he has an extensive uh, background in hospitality and business experience uh, along with uh, in a, a community development organization. So, so you know, Mark, uh, welcome. And I also I see that you're also Eastern Kentucky University graduate. So yes. I'm, I'm you know, glad to have you. I've got some good friends there as well. Uh, let's just talk about, again, welcome to Owensboro. And uh, you know, give us a little more background about yourself. That was not just a brief intro. Sure. And how, how the kind of ties to your new job in Owensboro. Sure. Well, when I inherited the Cincinnati East CVB uh -huh. four years ago, <laughs> Uh, that organization had lost its way. It was focused more on some local fairs, uh -huh. some local festivals, <coughs> being the piggy bank for some of those smaller type events. Uh, no relationship with their hoteliers, no relationship with uh, 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 business owners and bringing business mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and selling. And so uh, over four years, we transformed that office and that agency, and it became relevant in the community and became valuable in the community. And a lot of those same things we did there, I'd like to bring to Owensboro mm -hmm. and, and, and continue to propel this organization to become more valuable and even more relevant to our community. So, you know, being, being coming from Cincinnati East or Cincinnati area, you are uh, representing quite a large population. So how would you consider the size of your, uh, your uh, market when you promote your CVB in Cincinnati East? A lot of the things, it is a different size market, uh -huh. but a lot of the same fundamentals still apply. I, I mean, see, it's a very competitive area. We're still fighting for uh, space uh -huh. in the customer's mind, and we have to bring that here. So the customers today really have a lot of choice uh -huh. with what they do with their time uh -huh. and what they do with their money. Uh -huh. And so we have to dig in here in Owensboro and Davis County. Uh -huh. And let's make that. Let's let's show the values that we have for those customers. You, Ma Mark, you you know you have uh, led the uh, Cincinnati East CBB region to be one of the top marketing in the nation. So from there to what enticed you to come to Owensboro region to take this job? You know? It was really an interesting uh -huh. story. I wasn't looking to move. I had a pretty good situation where I was at uh, an executive search company that specializes in this field that I had a contact with. Um, learned that I was going to a conference in Nashville and he said hey well, I got this opportunity for you uh -huh. and uh, Owensboro was not even on the ra on my ma on the radar and so he said you gotta stop by this community drive by uh -huh. and call me when you get there just do me that favor and so I did I spent a whole day in the market and I actually fell in love with it <laughs> I, you know the convention center and then I saw the sports center the ice rink this whole riverfront development and then and something else started to happen. I started to walk around the community and talk to the people. I started uh -huh. talking uh -huh. to business owners, started talking to the people at the convention center. And wow, you put those two factors together, the facilities and the great people. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's what made my decision for me. Well, that's excellent. I think, you know, with that kind of, you know, uh, having that much interest, I mentioned you, you 
your, your mind was uh, kind of already already taking to you know divisioning different things that you could do and everything yes. else. So I think it's a great plus for us, and also with all the, all the background that you have. Yes. So with that in mind, I know it's it's been only a m not even a month or so that you've been in the job. Kind of tell us, uh, you know, what do you see? You know, how are you going to make a mark in Owensboro? How are you going to make the Owensboro to be one of the top destination in the marketing region? As well, well, it's kind of funny you brought that up. So I have my to-do list here. Ah, and so okay. just so people <laughs> understand, we have so much opportunity and so many uh -huh. things to do. It's about six pages long. Oh wow! So okay. we've got a we've got a short a long uh -huh. way to go uh -huh. and a short uh -huh. time to get there. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. six pages of to-dos. But the biggest thing we have to do is to get our sales operation going, uh -huh. ramping that up. We're already pretty solid in sports, uh -huh. but we got to take the sports and expand that out 12 months. And what uh -huh. do I mean uh -huh. by that? Uh -huh. we got to start finding more winter business uh -huh. when the hotels need the customers, when our businesses need the customers. So sports in the winter. Uh -huh. We need to find other sports besides baseball and softball. Archery is very big now. There's other sports uh, that we could do, like cornhole. Uh -huh, There's uh -huh. chess events. There's other uh -huh, weightlifting uh -huh. events, cheerleading. So we need to expand the sports. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then with the convention center, we need to make sure that we put ourselves in position to be uh, on every state association's list that we're going to put be in the rotation. Uh -huh. And Owensboro is going to be there along with uh -huh. the big ones, with Louisville and Lexington and Frankfurt and. Uh -huh. And, and, you know, Mark, I, that brings a good point because you, you talk about doing all those events and, you know, I don't know how it was in Cincinnati East area and all that. However, you know, people who are not familiar with what is happening in Owensboro intimately, there are quite a few different players. You know, you got, you got your office, you, know, you got the you know, convention bureau that we have, you have the uh, Owensboro event uh, director, now we got the Bluegrass Music uh, Museum, Bluegrass music side of it, and you know, kind of in a place that a private uh, promoter mm -hmm. too. So, how do you guys work together so people don't get confused? And no, I'm, I'm not even forgetting. I'm forgetting the symphony and then uh, River Park Center, the Broadway series. I'll just kind of list goes on and on. So, how how somebody can get hold of everything and make it as a a real you know premier uh, sure. communication as well as you know, you know participatory event. You know? And that's really an insightful question because uh -huh. that's the whole challenge and, uh -huh. and the better job we can do to bring those together, that's what's going to separate us from uh -huh. the competition. So our office needs to be more of a hub I see. to bring those people together. So uh -huh. we've already started to uh, reconnect with, for instance, the convention center right. and Tim right. Ross with the city uh -huh. of Owensboro. So uh -huh. we have a group that's already been meeting before called Team Owensboro. I see. We're I see. still going to continue to meet, but we're going to elevate the level of those meetings and really start to dive deeper into sales calls and things like that. So we're trying to form those partnerships. I have a consultant coming in in just a couple of weeks and we're going to be sitting down with the River Park I see. and uh, meeting this Friday with the Bluegrass Museum folks. So we're going to just piece by piece by piece put this puzzle together. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, uh, I have seen over the years in my experience that, you know, creating anything uh, new or, you know, thinking about new things all ties down to relationship relationship building you know with the partners now not every single event that occurs in Owensboro or this region happened because of you or me happened because somebody had an idea so how do you go out and ties folks to hey you know if you know something you know bring it to Owensboro what do you, what kind of marketing that you guys are you know looking into and again that's really uh, another uh, great question I think in my position the people that are very unsuccessful are the ones that are focused on me, 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 me. And right, you see that right. in professional sports uh -huh. today. It's me, me, me. It's not the team. So I think every day I have to start thinking, we have to do this as a group uh -huh. together. Uh -huh. And the better okay. we work together, okay. Okay. It, it, it makes us more successful. Yeah, because, so you know, I mean, you know, like in, you know, the an example, you know, I'm also on quite a few national boards or statewide boards and you know you're sitting down there well we're gonna go next year and no uh, and somebody say hey, why don't you come I think I'd like to come to Owensboro and all then you not wasn't that happens and then yes so I guess so uh, you have to provide opportunity to residents to say would you because like you know you mentioned this yes. morning that everybody is tied to some association somewhere yes yeah and that's another great qu yeah, yeah. great great comment and great feedback is that everybody uh -huh. is is involved in some professional organization a hobby group a train right. collecting group everything mm -hmm. and that's where it all starts is having our local uh -huh. constituents uh -huh. and let me give you an example we have a local attorney mr sullivan uh -huh. who's also uh, um, 
uh, an executive with the uh, this year at the Bar Association. Oh, I see. Next week we have the Kentucky Bar Association going to be right here in Owensboro. Thousand people here, spending money, buying gas, eating at the restaurants. That's because of people like Mr. Sullivan stepped up right. and partnered with our CVB. So that's how yeah, that works. Yeah, so yeah, we need yeah. the folks of Owensboro and Davis County to step up, call our office, send uh -huh. us an email. It all it takes is a phone call. Right, we'll help right. do the work. Right. You right. just have to help make the introduction. Yeah. yeah. And and you know, I mean, you know, we discussed earlier that. Uh, all the seven counties in the Grad Region, uh, even even beyond the Grad Region, surrounding communities and all that, everybody has something to offer. You know, from uh, from some cliff or the uh, historic places in uh, Hancock County to Bluegrass Museum and the Bill Bundro mm -hmm. in Ohio County to Handy Blues Festival in um, in, in Henderson County to uh, to to uh, Big Civil War enactment in uh, in McLean County. Yes, it kind of list goes on and on. So, and I think it's great because, you know, if somebody comes to Owensboro, you want to make sure that they spend more time, you want to fill the hotel rooms. Yes. So you got to promote the other outside area. So is that something on your uh, plan as well? I would hopefully, yeah. So a couple of things. We do still, uh -huh. we, we, we uh, subsidize the, uh, the grad area uh -huh. tourism oh, I see. market. Okay. So we do, f we put money into it. But more important than just the financial support is we provide the support just this other day, just the other day, we had a couple of folks in our office uh -huh. looking at what to do. They're interested in the Bill Monroe facility. Our staff was giving them directions, maps, mm -hmm. coupons, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. things like that. And so that's that is the way a true partnership works. It's not just us telling somebody what to right, do here in Owensboro. Right, and right. People really are like we talked about today at the board meeting. They're looking for a unique experience. Right. Right. And uh, yeah. they've done the museum before. They've done Kings Island before. They've done some of the stuff in Nashville, some of the big right. uh, cookie cutter right. things. They're looking for the stuff that our region mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. to offer. Yeah. And also, if they're going to come to the Handy Beauty Festival or some other events that we talked about it, again, you know, the major hotels are in Owensboro Davis County. So, you yes. know, it kind of you know, it helps Owensboro Davis County to promote those because somebody got to fill the rooms. And spend the money, you know. So I think it kind of wind me in on both sides, you know. So and another yeah. interesting thing, yeah. a little story that happened to me this uh, spring, is I was in Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, for a conference. Uh -huh. And uh, between the <coughs> sessions, I was back in the hotel room flipping around the TV, and a commercial came on for Michigan, the Pure Michigan commercial with wow. the ski slopes. They showed uh -huh. the lakes, you know, all these memories, and it just looked like a fun place to go. And I'm in Tucson. And they're providing. And why are they advertising right. from there? And right. so I was uh, talking to the hotel general manager, and I was like, "Hey, what are they doing? Spending advertising dollars, advertising skiing, and at the lake for people in Tucson?" And he said, "It's an economic development opportunity because people coming to Tucson are business owners. They're coming for conventions, and they see that ad. And so the purpose that we're trying to say is, most people that uh, start a business." or move to a certain area, many times began mm -hmm. as a tourist. So somebody's gonna come visit your area, right. then they're right. gonna say, boy, right. that's a great yeah. place to live, yeah. that's a great place to work. Mm -hmm. no, 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 that's great, I think, and again, I wanna thank you for you know, being on the show as well. But I, I mean, the last question that I would have in the minute that we have is that in this, in this day and time, you know, like taking our own personal example, you know, my wife continuously you know, plans some vacations and visits and everything else, but it's all done on the online yes so how do you compete you know how do you put your presence of Owensboro Davis County CVB and th things they had to offer on the online so somebody does not you know uh, uh, forget about you know, coming to Owensboro or something and the great thing about the social media now and the digital advertising is it does level out I see yes a Dallas market a Philadelphia market right, and right, Owensboro right. we can compete I spent uh, four days at a conference this uh -huh, year uh -huh. learning all the techniques so uh -huh, we're uh -huh. gonna apply some of these new techniques but yeah, yeah. we just have to step up our game in social right, media right, marketing right. and digital advertising yeah, yeah. again uh, no, thank you on the, no, no, on, the, on the show I think your, your challenge is to you you looking at people's uh, attention and money, you know, yes. and sometimes it takes a lot, of, a lot of competition and challenge and kind of unique way of reaching out to them as well. So, again, good luck to you. And Thank I you. I know it's going to do a great job with all the experience that you have. We're looking forward to not only, hel not only helping Owens for Davis County, but also the whole grad region. So Thank I you very much. Love. You can call us for any time that we can partner together with you as well. Thank you. I've been talking to uh, Mark, uh, let's say, uh, Kalitri, you know, sorry, so the first name. 
uh, and the, he is our new executive director of the president of the Owensboro Davis County Convention Visitors Bureau. We talked about how uh, the, the different activities in tourism in grad and region could benefit the whole whole uh, community as well as the whole region. Any questions, any suggestions you may have, and also we've got a new face in town, uh, please contact the CVB office or contact grad office. We'll get, we'll get you in contact with Mark as well. And have a great day. Thank you.